Welcome back to the Mafuba Jar. We've been sealed away for another awesome video. And today, guys, with the pre release of set 8 just coming out around the end of this week, I figure I give you guys a kind of a deck pro, kind of not, not exactly like my full final list, but just kind of a skeleton idea I had for one of the most hyped decks in the set. That's going to be the Android 21 deck. Now, as a big Fighters fan, I was really happy when I saw that they were going to be releasing a whole bunch of stuff involving Android 21. Not only in the main set, but the newest expert deck we're going to be getting is going to be an Android 21 deck as well. <clears throat> so what I found pretty interesting first, just talking about the cards themselves here, is that the one in the main set is actually the evil Android 21. But if you look carefully at the one from the expert deck, it's actually the good Android 21 in there. So it's technically two different Android 21s that we're getting, but they're the same all around. <clears throat> And, but they will do work pretty differently. So, for the main Android 21 here in the set, there's a lot to her, honestly. So her auto lets you play the field card as soon as you start the game. And that's going to be this one right here, which I'll talk about more in a minute. And there's a, as I said, there's a lot to this leader here. She has an activate main where you choose a clone token. That's right, we have new tokens now. You choose a clone token on your opponent's side and remove it from the game. You draw a card, then you get to choose up to one of your opponent's battle cards with an energy cost of one and return it to the owner's hand. Then at the start of your opponent's main phase, you choose up to one blue-green multicolor card in your energy and switch it to active mode. So she has a way of drawing and being able to restand energies, which is pretty cool. She awakens a four life by drawing two cards, which Honestly, for a deck like this, I wish it would have been like Restand 2 or even Draw 1, Restand 1. But I do kind of understand why they did it like that because she is already Restanding Energy at the end of every turn, essentially. So, I, I can kind of see why. And her Activate main here on her Awakened side is the exact same thing. You choose a Clone Token, remove it, draw a card, then you get to choose up then you get to start a main start your opponent's main phase. I'm sorry, like I'm just trying to read a text here because I'm still trying to learn all the new cards here. So yeah, it's word for word the exact same thing as on this side here. So it keeps a pretty consistent strategy throughout. It just gets rid it adds clone tokens to your opponent's side, gets rid of them, and then gets effects based on it. Alright, so let's go ahead and take a look at the field card here. Enjoy 21 scheme. I'm running two copies of this. It's a field. And it's autos once per turn. When you or your opponent play a non-token battle card, it can't attack for the duration of the turn. So that's pretty interesting, actually. So we've never really had a card that, in a di in different game card game senses, gave a card summoning sickness before. So that's pretty interesting. It's a pretty hefty four cost. But as I, but as I said, you do activate one from the deck. You could cut this down to one if you want. I like to personally run two, just in, just because there are multiple ways of getting rid of field cards now, and some of them I believe don't even need to necessarily send them to the drop area. They could send them to warp, shuffle, it, or whatever. So that's why I'm running two here, just to be a bit more on the safe side. But if you feel like cutting this down to one, that's fine because I do run ways to get it back as well. So that's just one of the effects that I thought was interesting. And the odds when you play a black battle card, you place it in the owner's drop area. So no overwhelm stuff with this deck, if you're going with the field. And the third auto is at the start of your opponent's main phase, you play two clone tokens when 10,000 power in your opponent's battle area. So the whole, like I said, that's the whole idea of the deck is giving them tokens, just so you're able to use your activate mains. And a lots of other cards here also have effects based on your, the clone tokens you give. So that's about the main idea there for 21 Scheme. Let's go ahead to our other cards here. We have four copies of Android 18 Speedy Substitution. She's got she's a one drop with two autos. First one being when you play this card, look at your top five. And you can just use one blue or green Android among them and add it to your hand. And her second auto is that when you play this card, you can at the end of the turn, you may choose a blue green multicolor card on your energy, return it to your hand. And if you do choose one card in your hand and place it in your energy in rest mode. So I could see some ways that would be beneficial. Not to mention one drop searcher. That's really, really good because literally almost everything in our deck are, is Android. So really, really awesome. And we're also going to be running this new counterplay here. Absolute release ball. It's a one drop counterplay. If your leader card is blue and your life is a four or less, 
The battle card being played has an energy cost of three or less. It's returned to the owner's hand instead of being played. Then you get to choose up to one of your blue energy and switch it to active mode. So it's essentially a free bounce back, which is really, really cool. And it's permanent is that if you have a multicolor card in your energy and your life's at four or less, you can activate this card's counter skill from your hand by adding a card to your life instead. So it's essentially getting back like a dimension magic kind of feel all over again, but for a counterplay. I think that's really, really cool. And um and yes, every color is getting something like this in this set. So I think that's really, really cool. Like if you're gonna make something that busted for a color, I I really do agree with the fact that every color should get one. And I really do like that. And next up here is gonna be Android 21, the ringleader. Running four copies of her. Her auto is that when you play her and your leader is an Android, you get to draw a card, and at the end of your opponent's next turn, which I love the timing of that way better, play you play one clone token when 10 has a power were in your opponent's battle area. That's honestly the one thing I kind of wish with um 21 scheme. I wish anything that did clone tokens would do it at the end of your opponent's turn. That way it doesn't really give them a chance to really attack with them because yes, it does revolve around clone tokens and yes, the deck does come with a lot of blockers and stuff. It's, you still have to deal with a whole bunch of 10,000 tokens attacking you because there's really, there's nothing really stopping them from attacking to my knowledge. Bandai might have made a rule with clone tokens that they can't attack. I don't believe they have, but if they did, I'm gonna sound like a gigantic idiot. <laughs> but no, honestly, that in general, I just wish that that would have been the timing for all of them, but you can't have everything. And her activate main for a blue and a green energy. If your leader card is an Android, you get to choose 121 skin in your drop area and activate it. So that's what I mean. There is ways to recur this card if you did want to only go with the one copy. But I have the two copies, say, just in case they decide, they are able to warp it. Because it is kind of a thing, so I just wanted it to be safe. And of course, I'm running four copies of the Magic Magic. Best best blue in the gate we've got. And of course, Sensu Bean. Obvious reasons. Anything with blue, you got to run Sensu Bean. There's no ifs, ands, or about it. Going to be running here next, Android 16 Energy Amplification. <laughs> Forgive me? If you have a blue green multicolor card in your energy, when you play this card from your hand, place the top card of your deck in your energy and rest mode, and you can play battle cards with power between 30 and 35 for the duration of the game. Seems to be a pretty common thing here that I'm noticing. It's a lot of these things say you can't play 30 and 35 specifically. Which I'm not too sure why they decided to do that, but I suppose that's kind of an interesting restriction nonetheless. And yes, this deck does have its own ways of ramping up energy. And not to mention the whole thing with clone tokens, you get to restand one of them at the end of the turn. So even if you do play this turn two and all of your energy is in rest mode, that's really no big deal. So you just reset it back. We also have Android 17, Protector of Wildlife. Now this is essentially the new Beerus and Broly of set eight. Meaning that even though it has energy exhaust, if you have a blue-green multicolor card in your energy, other than this specific card, you get to negate its energy exhaust. And it does have an auto when you play it. Once per turn, when your opponent combos, you choose up to one of those cards and place it at the bottom of its owner's deck, then negate this skill for a duration in the game. So I guess it's not too bad to play, because you are able to kind of disrupt your combos a little bit. But you mainly want this in your energy. That's just the main place you want it. Alright, next up here, for super combo, we have North Kai Keeping Watch. You could use the new Ginyu if you wanted to. It's it's all the same exact thing, really. I think the um, bringing yourself to four would be a little bit better than a sparking. Then again, though, with everything you're doing, sparking may not be too bad either. Whichever one you honestly prefer, it really does not matter. And next up here, we have Android 21, the beautiful scientist. Now keep in mind, some of these cards are gonna be from the expert deck as well. Now this is a four drop blocker. Jeez, that's a lot. And there has been an error on this. Even though it does not say energy exhaust, this is an energy exhaust. Just so you guys are aware, I'm not sure how the energy exhaust got missed when they printed this. But, yes, even though it doesn't say it, this is not a freebie, guys. Not a freebie whatsoever. And her auto is that when you play this card from your hand, you look at your top seven from the top of your deck. You choose one card among them, place it in your energy and rest mode. Shuffle your deck, then you get to choose up to one of your opponent's battle cards, KO it, and it has the other restriction that the Android 16 does. Can't play battle cards with power between 30 and 35 for the duration of the game. 
So there's quite a few ways to excel energy with this deck on its own. And I really do like that a lot. And it does it from like deck two, so it's not like the objection when you have to neg yourself another card from hand to do it. It's going straight from the deck, so your hand's not really going to be affected. I really like that a lot. And I'm going to be running one, two copies here of Photon Wave. You activate main, you draw one card, then choose all of your opponent's battle cards and return them to their owner's hands. It's a bit expensive as a four drop, but the fact that I can cover everything and there's no cost limit whatsoever, that to me that was really, really cool. So I think I think it could be kind of useful. And also two copies of Ultra Instinct Goku, one of the only this and the North Kai plus our ultimate are the only cards here that are not androids. To counterplay and counterattack, we got this from the Dragon Brawl set, and man, is it good! Its permit is that this skill, this card's skills can't be negated in area area by your opponent's skills. And its auto is when you play this card, choose up to one of your opponent's battle cards, ignoring barrier, return it to its owner's hand, and if it's your opponent's turn, you get to draw one card. So that's the whole purpose of playing this during your opponent's turn, and you can do it during either a play or an attack. It does not negate the attack when you play it, though. It just says counterplay this card. But if it's a battle card that's attacking and you play the Ultra Instinct Goku, it might as well be negating the attack because you just bounce it right back. So it's really, really awesome. And we are going to be running three copies of Android 21, a bad omen. Her activate main is that you get to pay two blue and two green and you get to play this card from your energy area instead. So it's four instead of five, which is pretty cool. And the auto is choose one card from your energy and place it in your drop area. When you play this card, choose up to one of your opponent's battle cards and up to one card in your opponent's life and place them in their owner's drop areas. So that's really cool when your opponent's down to like one or two life, just be able to bring one of these out. And yes, you have to neg yourself an energy, but you have so many ways of excelling your energy. It really doesn't even matter. Matter of fact, the expert deck of Android 21 actually has a lot more stuff revolving around getting rid of your energy. But since you have so many ways of doing it, it really is not going to matter in the end. And we are going to be playing the Violent Predator Android 21. So it's an 8 drop, bit heavy, but again, we have all these ways of excelling, so it's not going to be a big deal. It has triple attack and deflect, so that's really dang cool right there. And it's auto is when you play this card from your hand, choose all of your opponent's non multicolor energy and battle cards, ignoring barrier. Negate their skills and return them to their owner's decks. Yeah. That's that's pretty deadly right there. I can definitely see why now this was an 8 drop. If this was like any cheaper, that, that would just be ban worthy right there. But it's a good number for that. Man, is that just... Oh, that's disgusting. And we are going to be running three copies of Android 21, a brilliant idea. The only pure green Android 21 that we're going to be playing. And her auto is when you play this card, you activate the skill at the end of your opponent's next turn. You play two t clone tokens with 10,000 power in your opponent's battle area. Again, I love that timing. That timing is so much better. And it's activate main is you choose a clone token in your opponent's battle area, remove it from the game, and you get to choose one of these effects. You can either choose up to one of your opponent's battle cards and KO it, or choose your leader or one of your battle cards, and it gains 10,000 power and critical for the duration of the turn. So imagine playing this and giving this 10k in crit. Because these restrictions just say you can't play battle cards with between 30 and 35. Even though this would become a 35, you're not playing it as a 35. It comes out as a 25, so you're completely fine on that. And imagine just getting critical, triple attack and critical is a very powerful thing. Like ever since the Terminal of Power 8 drop Goku that had triple attack and critical, like that's, that's really good. <sighs> Sorry about that. But uh, yeah, like see this one, this one, this is where I feel that all clone token timing should have been. All of it, like even this one. Now, and that's just something I know I'm saying it a lot. It's just that's how strongly I feel that like all that timing should have been there. And our final card, we are going to be trying out the new ultimate secret right here. That's going to be the Vegeta Peak of Primitive Power. So guys, we finally have a pure Vegeta secret rare. I know people have been asking for this for 
a very long time, myself included, if I'm being honest. And I'm really cool, happy that we got one. So it is an ultimate arrival blue green for three bl blue and two green. And it has an auto. When you play this card, you get to choose one of these skills. If it's your turn, this card gains double strike, critical, and triple attack for the duration of the turn. Holy. Whoa. That is pretty insane for five energy. And, or if it's your opponent's turn, you choose up to one of your opponent's battle cards, ignoring barrier, place it in its owner's drop barrier, and add up to two cards from the top of your deck to your energy. So, with Arrival, you can place during either turn, and honestly, during either turn, they sound really, really amazing. And what I think is really cool is that, like, <sighs> Ah oh, man, like I almost can't decide which one is better because being able to end the game with double strike crit and triple attack is really, really good. Like if you just need something to just really push for the game or if you decide that you need to play it during your opponent's turn because you're a little bit behind on energy, it can just give you a massive boost on it. Not to mention getting rid of a really problematic card on your opponent's side. So both have really their benefits. Like, with a card like this, this is like one of the very few secret rares that I am like 200% certain can say, I'm so glad this is an ultimate. I am so glad you can only have one of this. Because if this was something you could have multiple of, oh my god, that'd just be brutal. Alright guys, so... Hope you all enjoyed this deck profile here today. As I said, this is just kind of a skeleton list I'm working on. I'm definitely going to be messing around a lot more because Android 21 is actually one of the decks I'm actually really excited for with this set. It's Android 21, Beerus. I'm so glad that we're getting new Beerus stuff. Like, you have no idea how happy I am that we're getting that. It's her, Android 21. The Bulma is a bit interesting, I will admit. The Bulma does have me a little bit curious. And the new Super Saiyan 4 Goku that we're getting on the yellow side. Those have to be the ones I'm really excited for, for this set. And you know I'm going to be picking up some boxes. Definitely going to be getting those expert decks. And I'm going to do my best to try to film a pre-release for you guys. I can't promise that I will, but I'm going to do my best. Because this weekend's going to be completely crazy. Because we have those going on this coming Saturday, believe it or not, is actually my birthday. So, going to be doing stuff for that as well. So, it's going to be a crazy weekend, but I am I promise you that I'm going to do my best to get a pre-release upload for you guys. So, if you all enjoyed this video here, be sure to smash the subscribe button, hit the notification bell, like and comment down below. With that, guys, I hope you all have a fantastic day. See you all next time. And you've all been released.